welcome to Paris Mountain State Park in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm Ranger Kathy Taylor. Welcome also to part three of our life cycling program that we're doing today. Remember, you are our scientists. We count on students to help us know more about the life cycles that go on here at the park. And we have many years of records of students' uh, findings here at the park. So in part one, we hiked to Mountain Creek and we got in the creek and found some animals that lived there. We figured out it's mostly a nursery for animals to grow up in the creek and thinking about the need for habitat at all stages of life cycles. We know that some animals need the creek in order to grow up. In part two, we measured the air and water temperature of Mountain Creek water, and we measured how long some of the animals were from the creek. And we know that all of that plays a part in how quickly the animals grow up and just figuring out more about how they grow in their life cycles. In part three, we're gonna head to the park lab where we'll put the animals we found in the creek under a microscope. Have you ever seen a dragonfly nymph or a baby salamander up close? It's amazing. So we'll get to know them a little better that way. I'll record the air temperatures we got and which animals we found, which species and all. And so we'll be figuring out more about the life cycles. And then I'll get the animals back to the creek. But join us now for part three. Wow, look at all the animals we found in the creek. After they've been in the lab, I'll get them back to the creek where they belong. Now that we've made it to the park lab, let's record the air and water temperatures for today. And let's think back to when we were using those thermometers, what did we get for the air temperature? Remember it's around 20, 21 degrees Celsius? I'll, I'll write 20, either of those numbers depending on what you saw would work. And that would be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. What about the water temperature today? Well, it was hovering around 17, 18. I kind of went with 17, whichever one you went with, what you saw with your own eyes is good. But I'm gonna write down 17 degrees Celsius, getting closer to mid 60s Fahrenheit there. Now, why does this matter in terms of knowing about the life cycles of the animals here at Paris Mountain State Park? We know that when it gets really cold, based on what we've recorded, we've noticed when it gets really cold or really hot in the summer, we don't find as many animals. In fact, after some research, we've learned that they actually will go under the creek to water under the creek where the temperature might not be as extreme and there might be water even when there's low warm water in the summertime, for example, or during a drought in the fall, they'll go under the creek. So uh, keeping track of the temperature helps us keep track of what's happening with the animals. Let's start looking at our animals that we caught in the creek. And I'm gonna start with one that it's always nice to find right here. You might recognize it from when we were measuring. So it starts with DR, and these animals we're looking at are listed on your sheet, your field sheet, toward the bottom. So, oh, where'd he go? So what is this? It is a dragonfly nymph. And when it grows up, I don't have drawings of all the possible dragonfly nymphs, but I do have one of this one, the spike-tailed dragonfly that our friend of the park, Jay Gaskin, drew. So it grows up to be a beautiful dragonfly with yellow and blue in it, but it has to start out in the creek. And it might take up to two years for it to grow up around here. Way up north, they might take five years to grow up some of the dragonflies. So pretty cool, huh? I have a picture of a dragonfly growing out of its exoskeleton going through metamorphosis. So it starts out 
in the nymph stage and a slit forms down its back and the dragonfly emerges as an adult. We've seen this in the creek where a student thought there was a big dragonfly on top of some little animal and they realized, we realized that the animal was just growing up. Isn't that amazing? Let's take a look at another animal we found in the creek today. How about right here? Ooh, this one looks interesting. Starts with the letter M. You might say it's named after a month of the year. It's on your sheet. It is the mayfly. You see the gills fluttering on the mayfly? It does have external gills, we say, and three tails. Now, I wanted to show you, so we found some bigger ones and littler ones today. Let me find a littler one to show you, just to compare the size. So one is older than the other. We're thinking about life cycles. So this one, bigger one, is older, we can say. And it has to grow up in a healthy creek. If it does have a healthy creek, it has a good chance of growing up to look like a picture here. Actually, the one we have here is looks like the flathead mayfly and it may be a little more yellow when it grows up in this picture. We have several kinds that grow up in the lake and other kinds that grow up in the creek. Habitat is everything to these animals. Let's look at another animal we found today. Right over here with two tails, six legs, so we know it's an insect. This one starts with ST. Hmm, you may remember it from measuring. This is the stonefly nymph. And they have to have healthy water and they have to have uh, moving water. Let me find a picture. When the stoneflies grow up, they look like this. So when I see one in the forest, I think about how it only got there because it had a healthy creek to start out in as a nymph. And the animals we've been Looking at here, we said they're nymphs. We know their life cycle goes egg, nymph, adult, three parts to it. So the nymph stage is sort of like the baby stage. They depend on the creek, which is sort of like a nursery, isn't it? Okay, we've been looking at nymphs. Let's look at a larva. Over here. There, how about that? Oh, it looks kind of leggy, doesn't it? It's actually uh, only has six real legs. You might be able to tell which ones are the real legs toward the front there. Uh, this one starts with D-O. It is on your sheet also. It's the Dobson fly larva. And by when we say larva, we're referring to its life cycle as being egg, larva, pupa, adult. And so it's four stages to its life cycle. Can you think of uh, another insect that has that kind of life cycle? Well, the first one that comes to my mind is the butterfly. So we know we had those, but this one doesn't grow up to be a butterfly. Oh, it walked away, didn't it? Let me find it again. It grows up to look like this. And if this looks kind of scary, it's not as dangerous as it looks. It's not even as big as this picture here, but they do get to be pretty good size, like pretty good size. And I've seen them here in the park on like on a the outside of a wooden building, that kind of thing. But they start out in the creek and it has to be, again, healthy water for them to grow up. So let's look at another larva. How about right here? Let's find it. There it is. Yep. So this larva starts out with the letter C-A, it's on your sheet. Yes, it is the caddisfly larva. And they're pretty cool. The caddisflies, the caddisfly larva in the water can uh, make their own habitat. Now this one just uh, is probably the net spinning caddisfly, but there are some, we found some sometimes that make a home inside a hollow stick or some that glue pebbles together and make their own home that way. So the caddisfly larva, oh, when it grows up, it I think it looks sort of like a skinny moth when it grows up. Here's a drawing by our friend of the park, Jay Gaskin. 
it's not as big as this, but um, it looks sort of like a skinny moth to me when I see one. And uh, we know it has a life cycle like a moth, doesn't it? Egg, larva, pupa, adult. So let's look at a different kind of larva. And it looks very different, doesn't it? It's round. This is called a water penny. But as you can probably tell, there's some legs under there. Isn't that something? The water penny is actually the larva of a beetle. It grows up to look like this. And they're found more often in some of the colder creeks and rivers of our South Carolina mountains farther north. But when we do find one here, like we did today, I put a little star next to the name water penny on our list of animals found because it's kind of cool to find and a special find that we don't find every day. That's amazing, isn't it? Okay, something different. What have we got here with pincers in the front and a little fan tail? Starts with CR. Yes, it is the crayfish. It's related to lobster. So if you're thinking of like, looks like a lobster, it is related in the crustacean group, but it lives in fresh water and it scavenges along the bottom of the creek, finding whatever it can find to eat and grabbing uh, what it finds, little animals or plants with its little pincers there in the front. So we have the crayfish. It'll grow up to be maybe not as big as my hand, but maybe as big as your hand, if your hand is smaller than mine. So that's a really cool creature that we found today. Now for our grand finale, let's take a look at this creature here I think you'll recognize from when we were measuring. What have we got? Starts with S-A. Yes, this is a salamander. And we see the gills up close now that we're looking under the microscope. It's in a dish of creek water here, and you can see the gill fringes around its neck. So it's breathing oxygen from the water with its gills. And when it grows up, it'll live on land. This is the dusky salamander and it will stay near water, but it can leave the water. And it actually is one of the lungless salamanders. When it grows up, it'll breathe through its skin. Isn't that something? So we have the salamander and it has the body shape of a lizard, but we know it's actually not a lizard. It's a salamander, but it's also an amphibian. Can you think of another amphibian that hops around here? Yeah, I'm thinking of the frog. So the frogs and the salamanders both go through metamorphosis. It isn't as obvious a change with the salamanders as they keep their body shape, but this one will be living on land when it grows up. Well, scientists, we've been figuring out a lot about the life cycles of the animals at Paris Mountain State Park. Thanks to second graders, we are able to keep up with what's going on in the creek and around the park. I have some information here just from one fall that shows when certain schools came, when the students were here, what temperatures they got, the animals they found, including each kind of species of mayfly or dragonfly of what they found. And then I type this up onto an Excel file on our computer and send that information out to other scientists as well as keeping that for records here at our park. The other scientists weren't here today, right? So you are our scientists today. And I hope that you keep on exploring the amazing life cycles that go on in our world. We know that for every single individual animal, that life cycles are a serious business, finding their food and water and shelter space, and space at each point in their life cycle. So uh, I hope you keep on exploring and getting to know our wonderful world and hope that you get Paris Mountain State Park someday soon.